Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look at another mini PC today under $200. Today we're looking at the Acer Revo Build. Uh, this is $179 as you see it and you get the keyboard and the mouse along with it too. Uh, nothing spectacular on the keyboard, kind of a cheap membrane uh, keyboard and a pretty uh, run-of-the-mill optical mouse, but uh, both are pretty functional. It's kind of nice to get an all-in-one package out of the box. So all you really need to do is add a monitor. Uh, this has a dual-core Celeron processor, an N3050 Braswell, which is the same same chip that is in the uh, Acer Cloudbook as well as the HP Stream 11, uh, both of which we looked at recently here on the channel. So we'll see how this desktop version compares to those two. Uh, those two laptops I just mentioned are fanless. This one isn't. So there is a fan that will kick on and make a little bit of noise as you're using it. It's not on all the time, but only when you tax the system. Uh, there are 32 gigabytes of onboard storage and two gigabytes of RAM like we've seen with many of these mini PCs. However, this one is upgradable to some degree. So you can uh, upgrade the RAM here on the bottom. There is a uh, slot for a uh, RAM upgrade. So it comes with two gigs, as I mentioned, but I think you can go up to eight gigabytes on here. So if you're doing a lot of multitasking, uh, you can do that. And what's really neat is they've got this proprietary stacking feature to the, to the device here. Uh, so you can buy hard drive modules and stack them up on top of it. I believe you can actually stack three hard drive modules on this computer. So you can put one on and then put another one on top of the other one. It kind of works as a daisy chain uh, working your way up. So you do have the ability to do that. I didn't find any of those hard drive modules when I bought this device, but uh, if there's enough interest, maybe we'll take a look and see how that works. They are promising other modules to work with this port, uh, but as of now, the hard drive module is the only one out there. And I suspect that they uh, want to see how well this does in the marketplace before they do more modules, because obviously they have to get people to buy this uh, before they can buy anything else for it. So if this doesn't sell well, I think the hard drive module will be uh, pretty much the end of the line with it. Uh, so that is pretty cool just to see some upgradability, especially from a name brand computer. Uh, there are a bunch of ports on here. You've got your power port, of course, we're plugging it in. Uh, two display outputs, display port as well as HDMI. You can use both simultaneously in a mirrored configuration or uh, drive two different displays, you know, where you can drag windows back and forth. Uh, just know that I think it only supports one 4K display at a time, uh, but it will do 4K K displays. Two USB 3.0 ports here, gigabit ethernet. On the side, you've got another USB 3 port as well as uh, a card slot for uh, memory cards and that sort of thing. This is running Windows. It's a full Windows PC. Uh, so you do also get a fully licensed version of Windows on this. And what's really been amazing over the last two years or so is the fact that uh, these little computers for well under $200 uh, run Windows applications exceptionally well. They're not going to run Grand Theft Auto 5 and all these high-end games, but uh, they will do things like word processing for homework and uh, work stuff. Uh, as you can see here, this really does run pretty nicely on uh, this platform and also does does very well at browsing the web and all the other things related to that. So doing email, watching YouTube videos, even going up to higher end video at 1080p at 60 frames per second, or 4K video. Netflix is another great example of things that work well on here. So those kinds of tasks and things that a bulk of consumers tend to do, this can actually do, as do uh, many other mini PCs like it. Uh, on the Octane benchmark test, which measures how well it does that uh, web, web browsing and HTML formatting and everything else, we get a score of 8,252. Uh, it's slightly faster than that cloud book we looked at, uh, which is running with the same chip. And I suspect it's because it doesn't have the same power and temperature constraints that those laptops do. There is a fan on here. And of course, it's not trying to keep itself uh, you know, in a low power mode to save battery power. It's running off the wall. So you do have a little bit more flexibility with that. So let's get this thing booted up. We're going to take a look at some Minecraft and talk about gaming. Uh, we're also going to look at its ability to play back some Blu-ray movies too, to see if it might work as a home theater device. So let's get this thing booted up. All right, we've got our computer booted up. We are running Minecraft. We'll be taking a look at that in a second. The boot time on this is about where all the other mini PCs we've looked at, uh, under 30 seconds. It comes right up to the Windows desktop very, very quickly, so uh, no issues there. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, though, is that when you uh, plug in the included keyboard and mouse, you lose two USB ports on the device here because it, each of these requires their own uh, USB port to operate. So I have one of these integrated keyboards. I bought this one about a couple months ago. This is a Logitech K830, and it only needs one USB port to operate and it also has Bluetooth built in so I could even take that a little dongle out and not use any USB ports at all. Now, one of the things we've noticed with Minecraft on the laptops running with this processor is that it is very laggy and this one is no different. So it'll uh, operate well for a minute or two here and then it'll just kind of bog down uh, as new things come in. And uh, this is not a behavior I have seen on other uh, sub $200 computers. It is only things running with this Intel N3050 processor. 
processor. This one's doing a little bit better than those laptops did, uh, but it's still not as uh, smooth as it is on some of the other devices. So sometimes you'll get a decent frame rate like we're getting now around 30 or 40 frames per second, and then it'll just uh, kind of completely lag out on you, and it might be really frustrating for uh, kids that are looking for consistent performance, or adults for that matter, looking for consistent performance. You're probably not gonna get that here. Uh, so this one is working a little bit better than we've seen with others, uh, but what's funny though is it can run great like this for a minute or two, or maybe even 20 minutes, and then it just totally conks out on me again. So I don't know what's going on with these chips, but uh, something with the driver or something uh, is causing it to not have decent Minecraft performance. And I think if you're buying this to uh, have somebody in your family play Minecraft, this is probably not the one for you. Uh, many other small mini PCs that we've looked at, uh, some of them costing less than this one, uh, do better with Minecraft, including that Kangaroo mini PC we looked at recently. On the 3D mark, uh, benchmark test, the CloudGate test, we get a score of 1,427. Uh, this looks at how well it can play some of those 3D games, uh, things like Minecraft. And this puts it in line with laptops running with that very same chip, that Intel 3050, uh, and it puts it below actually the Kangaroo Mini PC, which I just talked about, uh, that costs $99. So you're gonna get a little bit better gaming performance out of that uh, lower cost PC. That one isn't upgradable though, so if that's important to you, this one uh, might be a little bit better for that, but uh, you can get better performance and spend less if you plan on playing games on this computer. These really, again, aren't really designed as game playing machines, but uh, so many sub $200 PCs have done well with games, and it's surprising to see a new chip from Intel actually perform uh, not as well as their older chips do. So I would definitely be careful uh, looking at this for a gaming device. Now one thing it does do well though is Kodi video playback. What we're gonna do real quick is run the Empire Strikes Back uh, from my disc array down in the basement. So we're streaming that movie uh, up from the basement. This is a full Blu-ray MKV taken right off the disc. And as you can see, it spins up very quickly. Uh, we'll seek ahead in the movie a little bit. Really does have uh, exceptionally good playback even over the network here. So I'm very pleased with how that works. Uh, the one thing that didn't work as well was audio pass-through. So you can pass through uh, Dolby Digital and DTS audio, but not the higher end formats like DTS HD or Dolby True HD. And I know that's something a lot of home theater people may want to do, especially given you could stack up a whole bunch of drives and have your whole movie collection playing back directly on this device. Unfortunately, uh, those two audio formats aren't streaming through just yet, uh, likely another driver issue, but that's not something I've seen work on a lot of mini PCs either. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you are a very serious home theater buff, you wanna keep looking because it won't do those higher end formats, but uh, it does do the others quite well and it does uh, perform very well at video playback. So that is the Acer Revo build, 179 bucks with the keyboard and mouse. Uh, not too bad for basic tasks and video playback, not so good for gaming. This is Lon Seibin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.